Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather next day to 14 days for today's final video day. Um, we'll take us to the 24th of May and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the Excel GFS and ECM on top of the on a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks and for June as well. I should get on that for you in a moment just to say that first video say was our 6m uk weather forecast and we've also released the 10th summer update it's an el nino special and uh there's a few laughs in that one so uh, have a look at our 10th summer update and uh, see what you think just one more summer update to go next week and then we're done uh with our summer updates it will be time to release a summer forecast two weeks today can you believe it goodness gracious me um no uh check out the summer update anyway thank you so very much everybody for doing that thank you so much for tuning in on this sunny afternoon I hope having a lovely day everyone it's a uh, quite a nice day here today brighter than it was yesterday but still not still not that sunny um, I'm so sorry, but anyway, I'll crack on with the 10 to 14 day up. Right, well, here we go. Then you start off with a century and temperature of the CT. I don't know what I'm saying, really. The CT is currently sitting at a 12.3. That's ticked down a little bit. That's 1.2 degrees above average. That is divisional to uh, yesterday to the 13th of May. These are the 500 millibar high dolly flow charts from Penn State University for the uh, next uh, week, 10 days, next 7 to 10 days. We've got the uh, ECM WF on the top and the GFS is on the bottom. 500 millibars, 80,000 feet, is an area in the atmosphere where high pressure and low pressure being moved around by the jet stream running above. Red extrapolates to above average heights, which is high pressure. Blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. Um, and I say, these are for the uh, 7 to 10 day time frame, which of course gets us to around the um, 21st to the 24th of May. So uh, we can see with the ECM that we've got uh, stronger high pressure beginning to build above average heights started to, starting to develop out in the Atlantic and also to the north and northeast of the country. Below pressure and the jet stream uh, toward Greenland and Iceland. Also, the jet stream will be going north in the uh, next week to 10 days. The jet stream gets pushed northwards. High pressure beginning to build in the North Atlantic and across northern Europe. That should start to turn things a little bit drier and a little bit uh, warmer. However, there is a little bit of an upper level trough actually within that, but I wouldn't take that overly seriously. I think the main takeaway from that is that um heights are beginning to rise and as far as the gfs is concerned again we see quite a big area of above average heights over and to the east of the country and also out in the atlantic as well definite signs of pressure building could this be the start of summer making an appearance possibly 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 this is the beginning of the uh, summer Beginning to show its hand. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. We're at London again today. The red line is the 30 year upper air temperature average for London. We're actually going to have a cooler interval over the next few days. So, uh, becoming um, two, three, four days going to be uh, cooler than average. But we do see a warming trend quite clearly in evidence there. So, as you go through to the final week of May, you can see that the upper air temperatures are showing an increasingly uh, warm trend. At the same time, things look as though they're drying as well. So there are some limited precipitation spikes in the uh, next week to 10 days, but not many of them. It looks relatively dry. After that, again, we do see some precipitation spikes, but once more, not a great deal. It doesn't look as though we're entering into a much drier period and uh, also turning warmer as well. Our spring forecast always highlighted May to uh, be a warmer, drier month after, you know, a more unsettled March and April. Um, it's taken a while to get there, admittedly. We was hoping that this might happen earlier in May. It looks like it's going to be sort of the second half of the month. But I think the spring forecast isn't going too badly, to be honest. So, you know, we'll review it when we get into the beginning of June or early in June. But uh, I think the spring forecast is done all right, especially if we do manage to pull off this drier, uh, warmer spell in the second half of May. However, for the time being, temperature anomalies um, are still a little bit uh, cooler than average, actually, from the 14th to the 22nd of May. I'd expect these to start trending warmer over the uh, next few days, though. 
Uh, precipitation anomalies from the 14th, 22nd May coming out drier than average as well. The latest wind flow back from Earth Knoll School .net shows that we've got a weather system coming in from the west and from the northwest at the moment. That will take shy range southwards and eastwards in the next 24 hours. Remember, high map we're going to build up some more higher pressure in the Atlantic. Right, let's, go, let's start going from chart data. Let me start with you can make your work. We're talking big diet on Wednesday. High pressure reaching up from the southwest, bringing quite a lot of dry weather. It will be a little bit cooler under that area of high pressure, but eventually the heights really start to uh, become uh, stronger as we go into the end of week and the weekend. So, so by next weekend, uh, we've got a big Scandinavian high. A weather system is coming in to the northwest. That could bring some shadow rain with it. But overall, it looks like high pressure is building both to the northeast and also out in the Atlantic. So um, signs are there of higher pressure, definitely. ICON, once again, has that high pressure bridging up from the southwest on Wednesday. And that uh, strengthens as we go through uh, to the end of week and into next weekend. That's Saturday, 20th of May. Nice ridge uh, through the country then. Bring plenty of dry and uh, probably quite warm weather. I don't think it's all about a heat wave because the wind will remain generally from an east or northeasterly direction. So it's not going to be that hot, but it should be pleasantly warm and uh, a lot better than any, <laughs> anything we've had through most of this spring, I would have thought. The GFS midnight run, again, showing that bridge of high pressure building up to the southwest on Wednesday to Thursday, Friday, all dominated by high pressure winds coming in from an east or feasty direction. So not going to be a heat wave, but it should be pleasant enough. And as we head on towards day 10, we start finding some lower pressure then beginning to develop from the south. So that looks a little bit thundery, actually, by day 10. Probably very warm, however, but this thundery low begins to start trying trundle up um, from the south. It generally kept at bay, though, to our south by this area of high pressure uh, up to the north. So the, gra the gradients and the patterns become very slack with the GFS big dike run as we go through into the closing days of May. Okay, let's have a look at the GFS 6 then. High pressure once more is in the ascendancy on Wednesday, ridging up from the southwest. Well, quite a cool ridge to start off with, but I think as we head towards the end of the week and into the weekend, we should find as the high pressure ridges from the southwest to the northeast, temperatures begin to lift up, particularly for the north and west. We will still bring the wind in from the east across the southeast of the country, south and southeast, so cooler, cloudier conditions there, probably. But overall, this is a very nice, uh, strong, stable ridge that we've got, taking us up to around days 8, 9, and 10. Eventually, the high pressure pulls back out to our west a little bit, allows a bit more of a northwesterly wind in, so that keeps things relatively dry. Turns a little bit cooler. But overall, these are very anti cyclonic charts. Look at this. High pressure just in, in control right the way towards the end of the month. We get to the 30th of May, still with that ridge sitting very close to the country. So this does look like a much, much drier spell. The driest spell I've ever had for a very long time over the uh, next couple of weeks is likely. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, subscribe. Make sure you show your much everybody for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's know what you think about this and all of our videos. We are grinding to um, 15.8k. So We've got to put on around uh, 90 subscribers to get ourselves to 15,000. Um, no, where are we? We're at 15.8k now, aren't we? So 15.9k. We've got to put on around 90 subscribers to get to 15.9k. So please give us a sub. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. Um, right, okay. GM are showing high pressure in the essential. I wonder how many times I've said high pressure in this video. High pressure is dominating um, through the rest of the week and into the weekend as well. Nice ridge building through the country. Um, there, and as we head up toward day 10, that high pressure just weakens a little bit, allows the lower system to come in from the northwest. So by day 9 and 10, just starting to wobble a little bit with the pattern. But overall, again, uh, lots of dry weather with that. And then the ECM once more shows that ridge of high pressure from the uh, southwest at the end of week. High pressure dominates into the coming weekend uh, as well. Beyond that, heading up towards days sort of 8, 9, 10. So that's a bit cooler, a little bit more shadows, high pressure pulls out west again. And um, all, all of the model output, I think the ECM is the coolest and most showery around day 10, actually, with that high pressure pulling out to our west, allowing that trough to slip in from the north. We stuck within the um, Penn State University 500 millibar height anomaly flow charts. It was high pressure generally in the ascendancy. Um, around day 9 and 10, we do drop this trough southwards. But I won't take that overly seriously at this point. It's a long way off of that kind of um, detail. So, uh, you know, that high pressure the ridge might prove a little bit stronger than the ECM suggests there. 
Uh, this is my precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tomatoes.com showing rain coming samples in the east was over the next uh, few hours. But beyond that, lots of dry weather away from the northwest of Scotland as heights rise and pressure builds through the um, rest of the coming week. And we keep that dry weather going until we get to around days of 9, 10. And then start to turn a bit more showery from the north. There is even a suggestion of a little bit of winchiness with... Um, of those showers there on the 23rd of uh, May, which is quite unusual, so so late in, in the month. I doubt that will um, come off, but uh, but that's a little bit noteworthy, I suppose. Uh, these are the, these are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10. Gets us to the 24th of May. From the Isonic Metal, it's 14 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure ridging from the southwest to the north east should be plenty of dry and fine weather with that 13 again with a nice ridge from the atlantic into western and also northern europe should be lots of dry weather there nine uh, have uh, high pressure again ridging in from the atlantic into western parts of europe another nine including the operational run have a high pressure just a little bit further away from us and allows that trough to uh, dig dig in to the northwest of Europe and six deep with the trough, so that's the most unsettled option um, just here. So we've got nine and six, so 15 members of the East Channel songs are basically cool and showery at uh, day 10. The other options, but only is by far the majority option 14, 13, and 9 um, have high pressure in control. So, as I say, I think that ECM operation run became a little bit of an outlier, stop uh later on. And then, to me, time, these are the options that we've got. Uh, this gets us to the 29th of May. 22 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure over to the north of the country. Winds coming in from the east, that's mostly dry and warm. Another 18 just here have high pressure. You know, more or less in the same position, slight, slight, slightly difference with position of the orientation of the ridge, but basically high pressure dominating with both those options over Scandinavia and 11 high pressure just a little bit further southwards with low pressure in the North Atlantic away to uh, the northwest of the country. Uh, so that might be a little bit more showery up in the north, but basically high pressures in control at day 10 and day 14 with most of the options there, a protracted spell of drier and warmer weather. CFSB2, 500 billion bar height anomalies look like this from the 14th uh, to the 20th May week one. Uh, high pressure again, bridging in from the Atlantic into northern Europe. Lots of dry weather with that. Winds are in from the northeast, particularly in the south, so won't be a heat wave, but should be very pleasant. Week two is going to be the 21st to the 27th of May. Um, a large area of high pressure dominates over Scandinavia. Winds coming in from the east. That looks like it should be pretty summery, I have to say. Week three is going to be the 28th of May to the 3rd of June. Again, high pressure well and truly dominating the scenario dry and uh, warm or very warm with that and uh, week four rounds it all off it's before to the 10th of june with a big area of high pressure to right over top the country once again we should have plenty of dry and warm where with that maybe even quite hot by this point given that high pressure <laughs> has been going on for four weeks uh i would imagine by this point we could be talking about a little bit of a heat wave maybe We'll see. It's a long way off. And then uh, CFSB2 overall for June looks like this. So high pressure again is ridging from the Atlantic into Western Europe. So 700 millibar heights looking very settled, really. High pressure in control for June. The temperature normally is a little bit above average. Not excessively hot, but certainly on the warm and average side. And uh, not much simple for precipitation, but you'll expect to be relatively dry month with that anticyclonic signal. So signs of summer, maybe, after this uh, very, very uh, long-winded and, uh, you know, uh, very, very difficult spring that we've been through. It has been a slug this spring, but signs of summer here, I think, within the model output today. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe. Make sure you show me your video that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to your friends about Gals Worthies. We thank you so very much, everybody, for doing that for us. 
I should say what's coming up tomorrow. We're going to have the 6 in UK weather forecast. I'll be a 10 to 14 day or two. We'll try, I'll try and get a uh, update done for the late spring bank holiday as well tomorrow. That'll probably be tomorrow morning. So watch out for that. And uh, they'll be live streaming at uh, 8 p.m. tomorrow. We're going to have our Monday evening relax and chill live stream. So um, we'll show you 12Z and we'll uh, have a chat, of course, and also have some long range in that. So uh, live tomorrow at 8 p.m. I shall see you then. Uh, for that, you enjoy the rest of your Sunday afternoon or evening. And for this video, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.